Hello, and welcome back. Today we are reviewing the one quart closed ecosystem that I built last week. I built this project on the channel and received several questions and concerns related to the new ecosphere. I'd like to answer them today. So some people said that this was a cruel experiment, that this was a death trap for all of the things that we put inside, and I'd like to remind you that that's just not true. These sealed ecospheres can flourish. They can become beautiful, heavily planted and populated projects. Here's a great example. One of our young bladder snails that we added to the project, they are already growing rapidly. They are moving very quickly, and they have plenty of oxygen. Nobody's going to suffocate in this project. Following that bladder snail down to the substrate reveals a few of our various worm species. And you can see the worms interacting with the snail peacefully. They are not uh, parasites. They are not harming the snails at all. They simply uh, inhabit different niches within the ecosystem. They each have a different place within our sealed project. And they will not harm one another. And they simply coexist. Shifting the focus to the water's surface reveals a ton of our floating plants, and you'll notice that quite a bit of water meal has been stuck to the glass up here. And it appears that we even have a few bladder snail eggs. Our bladder snails will travel freely up out of the water and crawl around up here in the uh, oxygen level, in the atmosphere of the jar. They will generally lay their eggs up here, and those plants that have been stuck up on the glass were hitchhiking onto the snails. The snails drag them up here accidentally, but they will eventually return to feed on that material when it begins to wilt. So water meal makes for a great source of food for our aquatic project. Looking a little lower and adding some enhanced lighting reveals uh, the root systems of our floating plants, our water spangles and duckweed and some of the other things that I added. They are beautiful, you guys. We have a ton of our small creatures in here. Uh, constantly roosting on the roots, taking little breaks from swimming throughout the aquarium. And I think that's really cool. Zooming in a little further, and you'll see why I added the intense lighting in the background. Those little specks that appear to be floating debris, they are alive. They are living, breathing little life forms. And they are very interesting as well. Looking a little lower, just below the hornwort, and you'll see that we have a nice spike rush plant here. These long green spike-like strings, those are leaves, and they belong to this little node, this little thing here. This is spike rush, and it is a very interesting plant. This one even has a little roots that have started to grow, and I think that's really cool. And looking below the spike rush, we'll find the swarm, yes. My small white detritus worms interacting with our paramecium and some other unknown organisms. These white worms and these paramecium, paramecia, however you want to say it, they are very important to our aquatic project here. This is the digestion system of this aquarium. As the snails feed, as the other animals produce waste, these guys will break it down and turn it into things that our plants can use. It's a bit more complicated than that. The bacteria will attack the waste, and over time it will become fertilizer. But I like to simplify things here, because I'm not a scientist. You guys know that. It's very obvious. And I never claim to be. I'm just some guy with a passion for these projects. And I believe that these little worms, these little paramecium, these tiny animals, these omnivores and detritivores, they are very important for the success of any aquatic ecosystem. And many people, if they saw this in their fish tank, they would have a panic attack. They would uh, add chemicals and different things to completely eradicate all of these little life forms. And all I can ask you is why? Why? What are they doing? What is the problem? They are processing the mold in your aquarium. They are useful. They reproduce rapidly and they can be controlled by reducing the amount of food that they have available. So if you have a swarm like this in your aquarium, do not panic. I happen to view these guys as pets, as inhabitants of our ecosystems, and very important members. I noticed that they are forming clusters here near the bottom of the uh, where I planted the spike rush, and I, I believe that's because I had to punch through the sand 
to get down to the compost layer. And I believe that they are accessing that compost here at the point where the spike rush was planted. Our bladder snails are very happy and healthy in here. They are constantly scraping on the glass and though that might seem like they're starving and searching for food, they're actually feeding on the bacteria level, on the, the layer, the biofilm that forms in every aquarium. And these bladder snails are very useful as they force that bacteria to renew itself. They act a bit like environmental pressure. And if this jar were to remain sealed for five or ten years, those bacteria will begin to adapt and become even better suited to life in a sealed project. So ultimately, you guys, this is our 10-day update for the number five sealed ecosphere. A massive improvement over what I built last year, and I am so excited to watch this develop. There's something very special about having access to uh, a little ecosystem like this, a little slice of nature in the palm of your hands. It's very important. I hear you guys are asking for longer videos, and if that's the case, please let me know in the comments below. I've also had some requests for more bladder snail videos, and if that's you... Again, please speak up in the comments. Let me know what you want to watch, and I will happily provide. So, this is Bucket Ponds. This is Ecosphere number 5. You'll see it again in the future.